This session is part three of accounting utilities. And so in part one we covered um, the most common trend, common utilities that you'll use, um, purchase orders, receipts, and payments. And then we covered the uh, uncommon utilities. In this last part, well, it's really a combination of a transaction and a uh, utility, the bank reconciliation and the bank reconciliation utility. So really most of this lesson is on the bank reconciliation. So we've got a, another reference, a one-page reference on this. Um, bank reconciliations, bank recs, you can um, save them into batch just like you can with uh, payments and receipts as those two cash transactions and just like with purchase orders. So we've got a key software concept page for that. Works a little bit differently. And this is starts, but this page is on page 84. So again, you might want to bookmark this page. Actually, the whole um, uh, section on bank reconciliations is really a good reference guide. Although um, you can find the, re the other pages, 85 for and following, on the uh, in the need help button in the accounting and general manual. This is the only one that's somewhat unique here, page 84. So we'll cover most of this as we move, move through. Um, you can read through when a bank reconciliation is saved to batch but not posted, additional bank reconciliations cannot be saved to batch. Only one is permitted in batch at any given time. And it can be deleted before a permanent record is on your financial statements. So very similar to the other batch type transactions. And it's going to be made before posting. Other transactions can be posted as long as, well, I'll get into that as we take a look at it. Um, let's see. Posting a bank reconciliation, just in case I don't want to miss these points. Um, this third bullet. This prevents backdating. When you post a bank reconciliation, it prevents backdating of all ca cash transactions on or before the bank reconciliation as of date. After you post a bank reconciliation, you cannot void it after it is posted with exception of the December 31st bank reconciliation. That's the one exception you can record that and void it and do it over again because, well, that's your last bank rec for the year. So we've um, enabled that option. You cannot forward date bank reconciliations. So your current calendar, if your current calendar date is the um, is the fifth, then the um, then you, I mean, if current count date is like the 5th of August, you can't forward date it to the 31st of August. So you're not allowed to do that. However, you can backdate bank reconciliations. And this is useful when an entity receives a monthly bank. You're like, let's say your township gets your monthly bank statement on the first week of every month. So your calendar date automatically your computer date automatically advances just with your calendar date. So it might be February 7th, but um, you don't get your bank statement for January you know, until then. So in order to reconcile just for the month of January, <coughs> you can um, uh, backdate. You can refrain from doing your bank reconciliation until you get the actual statements from the banks and then backdate your bank reconciliation to uh, the 31st, be one example. All right, as you can see, there's quite a bit of text that you can read over in, I think it's about four or five pages for the bank reconciliation. I'm not going to go through all of that. Let's just go on to move on to the software, and I'll enter the exercises um, that are interspersed with throughout these notes. But these are good notes to read through yourself as you uh, go through your first bank reconciliation. All right, so in our 
accounting module, we'll go to accounting transactions, and this is the bank reconciliation transaction. As you see, I have nothing currently in batch. And I'll show you now the utility. If you go to accounting utilities, I've got the bank reconciliation utility. If I open that up, <coughs> excuse me. When I open that, I see that I have one item on my list. And we're pretending, by the way, I, I loaded in on my, my database, my sample database, another set of data. So um, again, everything doesn't correspond even to the u part one and part two of the utilities. Some of it will, some of it won't, so be aware of that. But <clears throat> we're pretending here at Buckeye Township, even though our real calendar date is um, September 2nd, we're pretending that this is February, the end of February, and um, or maybe even into March, and I'm going to record my bank reconciliation for February. I've already done a bank reconciliation and posted it, <coughs> excuse me again, for, um, for January. So here's my current bank balance for January, adjusted bank balance, and then the um, current UAN balance for that and adjusted UAN. Well, I'll explain that a little bit. But we can, after you post your bank reconciliation, it shows up here under the utilities. Now notice if I try to avoid this, I get an error message. Just turn off the sound, but it, it'll make a big sound and say, the bank reconciliation cannot be voided. Only the year-end bank reconciliation can be voided. That is December 31st. So again, we've kind of programmed that just in case December 31st, you post a bank rec and realize, oh, I forgot to enter a receipt. Well, you can go back and void that receipt and um, re-enter and post your bank reconciliation. I mean, void that bank reconciliation, but that's the exception to the rule. All other bank recs cannot be voided. Remember, and well, okay, so we'll hit on that again. You can, however, reprint the bank reconciliation. That'll print out all the information on the out, the warrants that were cleared and the out, the remaining outstanding warrants, the remaining outstanding receipts, if any. And um, you can also display your bank reconciliation. So here I had a very simple. Um, well, I had here's my January bank reconciliation, but. Um, Yes, you'll see, we'll go through, I don't have much in there, just got to set up. We'll see um, what, are, what it looks like as we go through an example of adding one. And then I can look at the end notes and um, at the other adjusting factoring, factor notes. There's only one, we'll look at that after we, we record the February bank reconciliation. So let's go back to the bank reconciliation tab. I'll just even close that. And... I'll click on the Add button. I want to add a new bank reconciliation into Batch. So it says, please note, instructions are provided at the top of each tab on the bank reconciliation form. Review all the instructions carefully. Also, there are no required month and uh, there are, are no required month end process to close. Well, that's a note uh, for those of you who are brand new to UEN. You're converting. Um, it from another accounting system that note should not make sense to you and you don't have to worry about it. In our old version of the software um, we had you had to go through some special month year end uh, technical procedure. You no longer have to do that. But um, in this in, in this version but that's a good point because if you click on you should look at each tab and read the instructions because they're pretty thorough. We'll see that when we get, get to it. Um, but the first thing you have to do is enter in the as of date. Please note, after posting a bank reconciliation, new cash transactions must be dated 
after the as of date of the um, posted bank reconciliation. Well, that was sort of in our in our uh, our notes with the uh, the key concepts. So if I don't do this, if I cancel this, I look at my utilities again. My last as of date was January 31st, 2011. So if I want to backdate a receipt, let's say, if I do this, I'm going to go way back here because I'm in August. I cannot backdate this prior to February 1st. Not Okay, so it's back to any cash transaction, whether it's a warrant, a manual warrant payment, or electronic uh, payment, or any of the other cash transactions. Um, they cannot be backdated beyond that last posted as of date. Now remember, the one transaction you can't even backdate at all is your warrant payments, though um, that print directly to the printer rather than the manuals. But all cash, other cash transactions can be backdated back to this as of date. So as you go on, do your bank recs. You know, if you're in, the, and you're, in the, you're in the month of December and you did a bank rec for November 30th, um, you, the la, your transactions can only be backdated, your cash transactions can only be backdated back to um, December 1st in that example. And again, that's cash. It could, if it's a non-cash transaction, um, it may be able, might be able to backdate that. You would be able to backdate that to, to the first of the year, such as with a, I believe, a uh, purchase order. Again, when backdating is appropriate, um, you want to have good reasons for backdating, as we've discussed in previous lessons. All right, so um, back to our bank reconciliation. So we click on the Add button, get our little message, and we select our as of date. Well, you know, technically, you could reconcile um, every day of the year if you, that suits your fancy. Um, obviously, I don't think too many people want to do that. Um, you should. It is good practice to reconcile your UN system with the um, your, your bank statements um, on a monthly basis, and so that's what we're going to do. I've, I've had few people who tell me, yeah, I reconcile every two weeks, um, but the most part, my our UN clients we talk to, um, they stick with the standard of reconciling monthly, and again, technically, you could reconcile daily if you want to with UAN. Um, so, Will, if, if you check your online banking every day, I suppose you could do that. Uh, so we'll select the as of date of the 28th of February. And what this means is that even if I have transactions posted in March, it, the, I'm not going to be reconciling those March transactions. In other words, they, they won't show up on my, my screen to reconcile. Um, only the transactions as of February 28th, that posted as of February 28th. So I click OK, and then I get this um, seemingly complicated screen because there are a lot of lots of information. It's a little busy. Just make it full screen here, and we get this. First of all, if you look at the top of the screen, we've got your as of date, and we have several um, sections here, well, or tabs if you call them, um, and each of them is a different type. We've got your bank statements, your receipts, your payments, miscellaneous, secondary checking accounts and investments, and then a few others over here, and then finally your reconciliation tab. And your at the, the very last tab is right here. Balances are not reconciled, and then you've got this button that's grayed out. I'm clicking on it doesn't work and that's your post print button. Notice that um, on the screen here I don't have a post button even though I have a batch unlike receipts and payments 
I don't have, I can put it into a batch, but I don't have a post button. Well, you post it from within the screen. So once you, you get this completed, this, you, this button will be available. But not until you get the green light. This, this is a read-only. This is just a display. When you get this checkbox, the green button with the checkbox, and it says reconciled, it's kind of your key, um, or the X says it's not reconciled. So we're not reconciled as of this point. We've got to reconcile with our bank statements. And we reconcile with all of our bank statements, whether we, if we have 10 investments and, and a secondary checking account and a primary checking account, you're going to reconcile with all of those statements from your bank or banks. Um, if you just have a primary checking account, then it's just the primary. And that's a little bit, you know, that simple, simpler reconciliation. Look, if you look at, so we're kind of starting at the end here and looking back, we've got our bank balance and then we've got our UAN balance. And ignoring all the details here for a moment, um, we have various adjustments based on our bank balance and various adjustments to our UAN balance, um, but not much for the UAN. We just have a, a few here. And it lists our receipts and our payments and any miscellaneous items. But we're comparing what we have, our adjusted UN balance to our adjusted bank balance. And those, and they, at the end of the day, should equal. And we should have no difference. Right now we got a $441,000 difference. So we have to account for that. So that, the first place to get started is our bank statements. So at the end of each month, you need to key in all of your bank statements. Now we've included a lot of examples here of different secondary, we got two different secondary checking accounts at this entity. Again, I loaded some other data just to give you kind of a very um, full example here. Technically, many of you may only have a primary checking account and you'll just have one line here or maybe a couple investments. But here we've got all of our possible state, you know, or not all possible, all of this Buckeye Township statements. We have, looks like about six or seven investments, two secondary checking accounts, and, one, and of course the primary checking account. We need to enter the bank balance, the ending bank balance for each month, uh, or for this month of February, into this field. Um, it's a data entry field under the bank balance. Now I get the question a lot, well what if, you know, I have an investment and the balance doesn't change? Maybe I don't only get an update every quarter. Well, if you then enter for January, February, March, enter in, or January, February, enter in the exact same balance you had as of the beginning of the year, and then at the end of March when you get an update for your interest, um, for the quarter, then enter in you know the change in the bank balance there as well. So you do have to data this doesn't carry over yet to enter the statement month end balance every time you do bank stuff, bank reconciliation. So if you turn to page 86, I'm going to go through and, and enter in those amounts that I have in our we have from our statements in the, the sample. So I know you can't see the statements here. You just imagine we we get our statements and these are the the February 28th um, ending bank statement balances. So the first one is 271,920. And then um, we moved money out of our grant account. This, um, for example, maybe we have this grant account set up, but there's no bank balance for that, no UN balance either, actually. So we'll, um, on the grant account, we have 10000 We've closed this investment, so no balance um, this month for that. I'll just enter in the rest. Again, some of these correspond to uh, exercise I've done. Some of them do not. All right, so that gives us our total bank balance from our statements of 
930. If I look at, go back to the bottom of my screen here, the reconciliation and post. Now that changes things a little bit. Now my difference is only 130,000. Uh, because my bank balance obviously is increased from zero to what I keyed in. But I've got deposits in transit of 119,000, outstanding payments of 251,000. Uh, on the UN balance side, it's showing that I did have receipts um, of 348,000 and payments of 408,000 that must have um, cleared already. So, and then we got some miscellaneous item of 70. So we're going to take a look at this as we go through each of these other tabs. So I've completed my statement. But by the way, I can save this at this time. Notice I save it. I'm actually, if I click somewhere else and I click on save, it brings me back to my statements tab. <coughs> but you can save it at any time and you can close the screen. And now we can see that it's in batch. And it tells me that I haven't reconciled. I could delete this and start all over. Or I can display it in a read-only format. So it's, again, in that batch state. I could go and record some other transactions, record a payment or a, a receipt, another cash transaction, or maybe investment transfer. Um, and as long as I date that investment transfer or that receipt as of, February 28th, then this batch bank reconciliation will update with whatever cash tra transaction I perform as long as I backdate it um, before, on or before February 28th. So, um, yeah, so let's say, so you could really, let's say at the end of February, you, you start your bank reconciliation. And you know a number of these things cleared. I mean, you, you have the receipts, and you know that you took them to the bank, and you know they're going to clear. Maybe you checked your online banking. But um, you're going to wait, you, you know, maybe, yes. So we'll just say you, you did that. But you're going to, you, you didn't complete it. So now it's the, you know, a couple days into February, February um, March, and now you, you come back, and you're going to come, post your bank reconciliation and you check your online banking and you see, well, as of February 28th, um, some interest was posted at the bank or one of my, my invested posted investments posted interest. Well, you could get, then go back and record a, a receipt, an interest receipt, and post it as long as you select, for instance, your, your receipt um, you, and your, your post date as, um, as of February 1st, I'm sorry, somewhere between February 1st and um, February 28th, it will show up when you save it and post it to ca cash, then it will show up when you go back into the, um, the, uh, the batch bank reconciliation. This will update. You'll get a little message saying that it's updated and it'll show up in your receipts area for you to clear. Same thing for other cash transactions. As long as that as of date is there, you can, and you haven't posted the bank reconciliation, you can um, backdate it, any other transactions you missed, and, uh, and it'll update it. All right, so our next step is the primary receipts. So this is the primary checking account receipts. And we can see right here that we have some of these have already cleared. Now, again, each of these tabs has an instructions. And they're pretty thorough. A lot of people go through this without reading it. It's right there. So we really encourage you to read that. We can see on a lot of information on the screen, but if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that um, two of these transactions automatically cleared, and they're for a sum total of 205,000 on deposits and transit currently is 119,650. If I look at my reconciliation post tab, well, um, 
and that in part accounts for, well actually in all, all of it accounts for the deposits and transits right here. So that's the part being added to my bank balance. And then the receipts um, that are, that transpired total up to, with some total of those, is close to that amount, but we're not looking at, at everything in here. We've also got some um, other receipts in the uh, investments and so forth that posted. But you can see how that these correspond to the uh, reconciliation tab. It's summed up there. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your statements out and you're going to say, okay, I deposited this at, you know, I had a memo receipt. I took it to the bank, deposited it, and here's the memo receipt. Now remember about, we don't have a good example in here, but remember I mentioned the deposit ticket number? Well, we only recorded one of those with the deposit ticket number. If we had more than one, and this deposit ticket number uh, 2101, then it would subtotal that so that we could match it up more easily on the bank reconciliation. I wish we had included a better example there, but um, that's where your deposit ticket number will show up. And if I had two of these, it would subtotal it so that I could match it up easily on my bank statements. But you want to go through each of your receipts and see, okay, on the bank statement, it shows that interest posted, and I posted that interest in UAN for the Star Ohio. So I'm going to mark it as cleared. And let's see. On page 86 and 87, it says clear all but um, 2011.10. So this one, or 2.2011.2, receipt 2, 2010. Okay. So I'll clear all except for that one. And you can easily use the header checkbox. Most of the time, your receipt's clear. Okay, um, I mean because you're the one who deposits them at the bank, and so you're gonna you're gonna be able to map these up pretty pretty easily. You don't usually have outstanding receipts unless you're entering your rece you're entering deposits like at the you know at the very end of the month, December February 28th in our example, and so it might not actually hit your bank until the next month. And in that case, you would leave that receipt outstanding. You would not mark it as cleared, check mark it as cleared. Um, notice when I select all these receipts, that uh, that changes my cleared receipts total. If I look at the back page here, I can see that receipts that my receipts my deposits and transits are now substantially reduced, right? Because I've actually I've cleared the receipts in UAN. Uh, I mean, cleared the receipts, confirmed that with my bank rec reconciliation, on my bank reconciliation. Now, some of these, the ones that are in grade here, the investment transfers, you might be asking, why did those clear automatically? Well, these were... Um, transfers only or will be transfers only or closed investments. So here I, here I can see that I closed, remember that $200,000, um, we had an investment that we closed in the early exercises for $200,000. We had the money market investment we closed for $200,000. And so that's an action that you took in UAN um, and so the, the software automatically assumes, okay, if it closed at the bank, you closed it in UAN, you should have closed it at the bank at that time. And so it's going to automatically mark it as something that um, clears the bank um, on your bank reconciliation. <coughs> if we jump over here to secondaries and investments, we can see that it's marked in both places, that those two, that 200000 and the 5000 that we closed um, are reckoned, it's just a matter of 
basically showing you that this money, this, these amounts have been accounted for. And that's the nice thing about this, util, this bank reconciliation tool is that you account for every action UAN, uh, or you can account for every action in UAN that you take. Everything that you post relates to transactions, cash transactions shows up here. Um, most of the time, you're going to have to clear those yourself to confirm it. On some occasions, it automatically clears because of the nature of the transaction. All right, so I'm going to follow my exercise, and you can see down here from the cleared receipts, when I go and clear all of them, with the exception of the, this top one, how it adjusts the cleared receipt, and it reduces my deposits and transit to $200. Um, this, um, this receipt here, though, remember from our fund balance adjustment, that was, if I come back, I'll just leave this open, and if I go back to my utility for fund balance adjustments, remember how we did a prior year receipt adjustment for $200 for that bad check. Well, that effectively voided, effectively voided this receipt from 2010. So we wouldn't want to clear this receipt. That would be wrong because it never actually cleared the bank. This receipt, it was a bad check at bounce and never actually cleared the bank. So never increased our bank balance. So we don't want to do that. We want to leave that as a, um, as not, um, as uh, uncleared, but we do want to avoid it because remember we took care of this using the fund balance adjustment. Um, now if I had not done that fund balance adjustment and I click this void box, it would give me an error message saying that I, it cannot remove it from this screen until I do a fund balance adjustment. So because I've done it, I fill in that checkbox it reduces my deposit and transit to nothing because it's basically going to take that off my list of receipts to clear, marks it as void, and and next and when March when I do my my um, now that I've done this and I once I post it when I do my March bank reconciliation, this receipt will no longer show up on my list of receipts. So it does takes care it does the same thing effectively for the bank rec except it doesn't incorrectly clear it, it marks it properly as void. All right, so that's the re receipts tab. So now I can see I have zero, um, actually I do have a deposit and transit, but it's related to something, another statement. Remember, this is my primary um, checking account, mark primary. So now I'm going to go to my primary payments out of my primary checking account. And it shows me on here, in grayed out, I can't change it, any checking transfers and investment transfers. So again, this relates to the primary checking account, and I can't uncheck that because there's something that autom I automatically, or I did in the system um, that didn't involve um, a warrant. It was a, a transfer from one account to another. So it's going to clear that automatically. Uh, we can see here that I voided electronic warrant from the company. I believe I did that um, in one of our exercises too. And so it's automatically going to show me that, yes, during the month of February, I recorded, a, I posted an electronic payment, and then also in the month of February, I voided that payment. So it's just showing that me that transaction had really, in this bank rec, no effect, okay, besides displaying that, that, that reality. And now that I might catch that somewhat. Maybe on my bank statement, um, it actually clears, but I'm showing that I, I voided it in the UN system. So that would be a heads up to, oh, that's why my bank reconciliation is not working out right, because I, I shouldn't have voided it. It actually cleared at the bank. So I might have to record that again or something. So that's why the advantage, it shows you everything you did. No matter, no matter what. And so now I'm on page uh, 
87 of, of the, uh, the booklet. I'm still on page 87, the bottom of the page, and we're, we're uh, taking care of. It says that I should leave 5, 6, and 7, or 10,000, 5, 6, and 7 as outstanding. So that's here, 5, 6, and 7. So I'm not going to clear those, but I'm going to look at my statement and say, oh, yeah, this um, 1 and 4, those cleared the bank. And actually, only one cleared the bank, or number 10,001. I'm sorry, I'm reading this completely wrong. Four cleared the bank, this is clear all others. And then the electronic payment cleared the bank, $400. So we can see how, if I click that, how if you look down at the cleared payments, it's going to um, by clicking this, that's that $250,000 uh, payment I made, I made to the sewer guys, um, and that uh, cleared the bank. So that increases my cleared payments, decreases my outstanding payments by a very significant amount. If I look again at the reconciliation post, well, that made a very significant debt in my, dent in my bank reconciliation didn't it? Because now my outstanding payments are only 1095 total for all statements. So let me jump back. I'm back on the primary check, checking payments. And I've got one more thing to do. I've got to void that prior year. Let's see, it's 1001. And that's a uh, prior year warrant. Remember, I, again, I did the fund balance adjustment for that prior year warrant for that lost check of $20. And so that allows me to void it on the bank rec. If I hadn't done that fund balance adjustment, again, I would not be able to void it. Don't want to clear it because it never got cash at the bank. That would be a mistake. So um, it was a lost check. So I'm going to void it. And it marks it as void. And as you can see, the change in my outstanding payments is also adjusted. So now I'm done with the primary payments. You can see that now I'm $80 off because of that. And the next step is miscellaneous and out of the primary. So this would be anything that related to primary um, adjustments that are related to cash. Often you won't, you won't see a whole lot in this screen. And, but you do have to clear it so that you're aware that um, you, you're accounting for everything. So here we have outstanding miscellaneous of $70 and no cleared miscellaneous. If I click on checkbox, it um, clears everything and then the, um, it actually shows that I've cleared $70, a net of $70, two positive two fifty minus 200 fund balance adjustment, and then a plus. Now I have a net of $70 cleared and no outstanding miscellaneous. Let's go back here and see that my standing miscellaneous um, in the bank balance is now accounted for. All right. So you can see how all of these have affected um, this, this balance. So now I'll go from miscellaneous to secondaries and investments. And most of this is automatically cleared when you're dealing with secondaries and investments because if they don't involve warrants, you're, you're moving, it would be like investment transfers um, where it's a, or um, yeah, investment transfer where a warrant is involved or um, checking transfers from secondary to primary. So again, not, usually not a lot of activity that you have to deal with here besides looking and seeing, oh yeah, that's what happened. And it's shown on both sides again. Look at receipts, we had that investment transfer where we closed the investment. It's shown in both places where it's relevant. All right, so um, that's on, we're supposed to um, clear all of these for miscellaneous. We can see the one that does make a difference 
and that's the ten that's ten dollars in the uh, interest receipt that posted for this CD. So I click on that. I'm now reconciled. I looked at my reconciliation. Forgot to uh, look at this before. Uh, my difference was only ten dollars after voiding that last payment. And um, now notice these are outs. These are I didn't fill in. Well, why is that? Because in the, at the bank, um, they never cleared the bank bank statements. So as far as they never re were reduced my bank balance. Something I skipped over there before. So I would not clear them, leaving, leaving them outstanding. All right, so jumping back to secondaries, I've got this interest receipt. I look at my statement, and I say, yeah, that's on my statement for my um, interest investments, or my uh, investment here, my CD. So I'm going to clear it, and voila, it goes from red to green. And that tells me I'm reconciled, and I'm ready to post. So those are all of my you know, cash transactions that I've reconciled. All right. Um, well, what if let's assume that this um, a different type of receipt didn't clear the bank. So we leave it uncleared. And we're off by an amount. We're not sure what that amount is all about. Let's just pretend that this didn't exist. It didn't even show up. We didn't have this transaction. Well, if that didn't exist and we can't, we go through this and we can't figure this out, then, well, then what do we do? How do we investigate? Well, we've got a couple of tools available. And the first one is this bank balance comparisons tool. And this is a little bit busy, but it's, um, it's a nice Thing. It shows you everything, all of your transactions for the month. It shows you your prior bank balance and then your entered bank, your calculated bank balance. So your prior bank balance is what you entered back in January 31st in your um, statements tab. And then, oops, back here um, under bank balance comparisons. And then what you entered in this month. So that's just the amounts, the data entry you inputted here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw something in here, and I'll say maybe another $100 here. So I'm really off on my bank reconciliation. So if I, if I look at my balance comparisons, notice that there's this little checkbox. This is kind of like a tree format here. I got my primary checking account. If I click on that checkbox, it shows me what makes up this calculated balance. Basically, all of my transactions and where, what status, what the status is, basically what I marked in all these other tabs. Did I clear them? Are they outstanding? Everything related to my transactions in the primary checking account. And I come back here and I look at the grant checking account. I can see that, um, well, there's no activity for that one. Um, in this month besides move, closing it. If I look at the other grant account, I can see that I transferred money from the primary to the grant, this grant account, and I cleared it on my bank reconciliation, etc. For all, most of these don't have very much. Um, if, if for these investments, so usually just interest revenue. And I might find uh, part of the problem here. So this helps me. I see um, Oh, that interest receipt. Maybe I should go back to my secondary investments, and I need to clear that. So when I clear it, well, that accounted for part of my problem. So now I just got to figure out where the 10000 comes from. And again, if I look at the balance comparisons, maybe I find that for the money market, I forget which one that I manipulated. I think it was at the money market one. Um, you know that should be a zero balance, and I entered a bank balance. You know, I, that's not ten thousand dollars. I, I that was a typo. So I'll come back here, change this back to zero, and 
now I'm reconciled again. Now I'm reconciled. So that, that was just a typing error. And that's really easy to make on, on this screen, maybe most likely be in your primary checking. So that's one way to figure it out. Well, again, let's pretend this never happened. We know this doesn't show up on our list. So we're off by $10. Well, what you could do is maybe you check your bank statement and you find, in fact, that you did have an interest receipt and um, for that investment, and you just forgot to post it or record it in UAN. Well, you could save this, close it. And as I mentioned before, you could go back to transactions and post that interest receipt or whatever trans cash transaction that was. As long as you dated it as of February 28th, it would show up on your bank reconciliation. If you date it March 1st, it's not going to show up on your reconciliation. So you can take care of it right there. Um, but in fact, we know that we did. And then when you show, when it, when you come back into the batch bank reconciliation, voila, it's there, and you're, it's available for you to clear. And now you're reconciled. All right. So um, we'll have. Uh, well, what if I'm still not reconciled? What do I do? Well. That's when you start going to reports. And you want to reconcile it, so you want to investigate. And you want to print a two excellent reports for the bank reconciliation it are under the cash reports section of accounting reports and statements, cash reports. There's only two there right now. It's cash journal and cash activity. And this shows you all of your transactions by month. You can select it for the year or for a particular period, but it's best to look at it by month. And here we can see, because we're reconciling for the month of February, so we just look at that month. And I'll go ahead and display that February's transactions. The cash activity is really nice because it's, it's really not concerned with funds. Your bank isn't concerned with your funds, right? They're just concerned with their cash in and out, right? Well, this shows you all of the cash transactions for the month of February, um, all types. It'll show, show you the type, whether this was a, uh, a charge or a uh, memo receipt or standard receipt or a payment or electronic charge or an adjustment. It's going to show you all that activity and show whether it was an increase or decrease to your cash. And it'll also show you your primary checking account balance, whether it's increase or decrease to your cash balances. So that's an excellent report to, you can go line by line and match that up to what you have on your um, bank statements. You can see we close the investments, etc. So just kind of check it off here, check it off in your bank statements. Well, if that still don't find the problem, you can look at even more detail under the cash journal. Or you might just start with the cash journal. It's up to you. If you display that, it's the same, all the same information except it has even more detail. Um, focuses on cash, so it shows you your cash, whether your revenue increased, your expenditures um, increased, and then your total balance. But then it also breaks it down by your primary, your total balance, your primary checking balance, your pooled cash excluding primary, so that could be secondaries or investments that are pooled, then your non-pooled investments. And it gives you all the information, your post date, transaction date, source. You might, this might be helpful to see what the reason was um, that you entered in, um, the receipt or BC number, um, P or BC number, warrants charge, warrant number, or, or electronic um, charge number, and all the relevant account codes. So these are your key reports for the bank reconciliation. Well, there's only one more that um, I think is worth mentioning, and this one you and um, you want to write this down. So it's accounting reports and statements, cash reports is how you get to those two. The other place is under general, 
general reports and statements, vendor payee reports. And there, there's a lot of those vendor payee reports. But this one, if you can't find the problem, you might look here and look at your vendor payee um, payment register and receipt registers. And this will show you, just do year to date, we don't have, yes, this will show you it, all of your payments by the vendors. So it's a pretty good report um, to look at for your payments um, if you need to kind of dig down into some more details. But again, I think the cash journals is really the best. And um, I guess, and then again, then the receipt register does the same thing for your sources. The um, finally, I guess, for investment reports, for your investment side, you can go to accounting, reports, and statements. I know I'm kind of jumping ahead to report section, but this is really relevant. Investment reports. And the investment activity is an excellent report to show you all the, the activity you had for that particular month. So you can look up your interest, the post, and so forth. But once again, the cash journal and the cash activity report are the absolute best for this, um, for, for um, investigating issues with your reconciliation. So I'll go back and uh, you can't open two screens at the same time. I've got the Edit Bank Reconciliation open. And so notice I'm ready to post it. I've got the green light, as we say. There's no difference. And you know, now I can save this, but I'm ready to post. So I would click on the Post Print button when I'm ready. And it forces me to print a copy of this. So I'll go ahead and print it. If you have a paper jam and it doesn't print all right, well, then you select no to this question. Did it print successfully? And that opens up the bank reconciliation. And we can see now that our February reconciliation is posted. If we need to reprint a copy of that. We can. And there's a, a really a key thing that <laughs> I, uh, I overlooked, uh, forgot to mention, I'm hoping that you never have to use it. That's one of my reasons. So I'm going to add another bank reconciliation. Since we're well past February, I'll just I'll go ahead and maybe I'll just do March. We don't have anything in there, I don't believe, for March. But I'll select March so I can show you this. It's, as you can see, there's not much there for March. I did some, some things. But yeah, I'll go ahead and reconcile these. Well, we'll just look at it. It's this Other Adjusting Factors tab. Sorry, I forgot to show you this before I posted the reconciliation. And um, as you can see, there's, not, there's only a few options here. This is if you just absolutely cannot find the problem on your bank's reconciliation as of why am I not reconciled? Why does it not equal? Well, I can clearly see the problem here. I didn't enter my bank statement balances. Um, and, and I didn't enter that bank information, but assuming you did, maybe I could put, you know, three hundred and uh, nine thousand. Save that. So now I'm a lot closer. I'm off by eight hundred fifty-five dollars. Well, if I can't figure it out by looking at all of my reports, and maybe I just have to move on, um, and I'm going to come back, you know, over the weekend. I want to get this reconciliation posted. Well, technically, you can record um, an other adjusting factor. And I want to emphasize that these other adjusting factors are not transactions. It's basically what you're doing is plugging in a number into your bank reconciliation. And so, for instance, I'm off by 855. So if I plug in that number, 855, um, actually, you have to put it in the right place. I'm just kind of randomly, not really thinking about this. Look at it. 
voila, I'm, I'm magically reconciled. But I haven't accounted for that $855. It's just a, a plug-in number. It says payments not in the U, in UAN. And you can read through these. Um, uh, receipts not in UAN. These are receipts that cleared at the bank but did not post in UAN. Well, um, why would they clear at the bank and you didn't post them at UAN? The best thing to do would be go back and post them in UAN. Other, uh, here's payments that cleared at the bank but were not posted at UAN. Well, again, now maybe there's a reason why you wouldn't do that. Maybe you have to find out some you know, this was an electronic payment, and you've got to, I don't know, there could be some real off-the-wall off reason why you'd want to hold off on posting that payment before you post this bank reconciliation. Most likely, what you should do is just save this and go back and, and post that payment or the receipt. Um, here's something that's a little bit more likely, deflating bank errors. errors. Well, so both of these are something that went wrong at the bank. So maybe that's, so that would be a little bit more common thing. So um, at the bank, I, I've got $855 problem actually. Um, it's a deflating bank error. And so here we can see adjust that side. It, it adds to my bank so that it'll match my UAN numbers. Again, it's not a transaction. It doesn't fix anything. It just fixes your bank rec temporarily. But what you're saying is, well, a bank made an error. They, had, they, didn't, they didn't fix that as of February 28th. They're going to fix their error in March, they told me. And so I'm plugging in this amount. And then hopefully when I do my bank statement, when I get my bank statements for March, it'll show some kind of adjustment on a bank statement of $855. Um, but I can't, I don't want to record a transaction for that because it was a problem with the bank. So you would plug in the amount here, whether it's an inflating or a deflating bank error. And then finally, there's the pre-conversion um, payments. And this has to do with those who are, con people who are converting to UAN, and we'll talk about this when, when we do the, um, you're converting from some other system, uh, manual or some other software system to UAN. You'd only use that in that year, um, and it applies to certain conversion methods. So we'll talk about that when we get to that lesson on the conversion. But anyone else, if you're a current UAN SUS customer and you never use the pre-conversion, you never had a reason to, you'll never you should never use it then because it's, it's only for that time during the conversion period. All right, so um, say it's a deflating bank error. Again, posting this, if nothing happens at the bank and they don't fix the problem, well, come April when you do your bank reconciliation, you're still going to be off by $855. So it doesn't, it's not a true transaction just a, a plug-in number. Now I could be, you know, set, put a note here saying bank says, you know, they w are, are fixing in March, or I should say April. Again, I'm kind of, you know, doing this. So I'll save that. I'm reconciled. And I could post the, again, I'm way, I'm in September here, so we're way ahead of the game here. I can post this for um, March, print it out, say it, print it successfully. That's out of batch. Here's my March reconciliation. And um, here's where we get to the edit notes. The only thing I can edit in a bank reconciliation is this, the other adjusting factor notes. So I might come back here. And you see where it says bank says they fixed the problem in April. I could, when I, I come back here after April and say problem resolved with bank in April, um, you know, April uh, 5th or whatever, something of that nature, and save it. 
What you don't want to do, and so I come back and look at that later. I see I've updated my notes about that deflating bank error. So even though it was fixed in April, when I look at back at my March bank reconciliation, I still have the other adjusting factor. I just can make a note about it saying, okay, this is this explains to my auditors when they look at this why I just plugged in a number. What you don't want it to do, you really want to avoid, is just plugging in the number and you don't have absolutely no idea why you're off by $855. If, and, you have, and, and now you really have very little reason to do that anymore because, well, it's not a good example, but if I look at um, my uh, February, <laughs> we've got, you, we account for everything in UEN, so you should be able to look through. There's, there's nothing here that isn't seen in the, in the background. So um, there's very little reason to have other adjusting factors in UEN anymore. Um, it, but if it's necessary, we highly recommend that you don't let any unknown other, other adjusting factors go for more than a month, uh, one month. You, know, you might have to wait a week. Maybe you got your, you know, going to be out sick for a week, you got a, uh, something planned, and you're, you're just not be able to reconcile. We understand life happens, but our recommendation is don't let that linger on for long. Because I'm telling you, I've been on the support line, and I get some calls from fiscal officers who say, oh, my bank reconciliation's off by $20,000. I've had a few calls like this, and I, after some pointed questions, I find out that actually um, it's been off since for the past eight months, and back eight months ago, it was off by um, $7,000, and it just keeps accumulating. Um, and they're not really sure. They got an idea, but it's just spaghetti. You get this, you know, think of the spaghetti noodle. It just wraps around, and you're not sure, you know, it was off $100 positive here, and a negative, uh, you know, $5,000 here, you know, and so forth. On one month to another month, well, you got eight months of bank, of eight months to reconcile. So you don't want to let an unknown other adjusting factor linger. You want to reconcile with your bank on a monthly basis and without any unknown factors. So that's, uh, again, I'll get off my soapbox there, but I've seen some stuff. And, and by the way, at UEN, um, we help you out with software and, and point you in the right direction, but well, that what I just described, bank reconciliations can be very time consuming when you get yourself into a mess like that. And the support, we, we just simply don't have the personnel to, to spend, you know, it can take five hours trying to figure this stuff out. We don't have the personnel to do that. So we'll point you in the right direction, show you some good reports, but really um, that's uh, you're on you to, to reconcile your with your bank. So. Um, We've given you some really good tools to do that. So that's it for the bank reconciliation and the utility. Um, our next lesson, lesson will be on accounting reports, um, as we've touched on many of them before, but we'll, we'll go over some highlights there.